Hi there. A while ago, I did a review on a portable battery-powered soldering iron from Secure, and I was very impressed with it, and uh, I've used it a lot around the workshop and out in the field. Now the company has released a more advanced version that looks to be just what I need around the workshop. So let's take a look at its features. Before we get started, this video in part is brought to you by PCBWay. If you're handy with a soldering iron, then consider using PCBWay for your next project. Great for students and hobbyists, PCBWay can supply all your custom PC board and prototyping needs. They also provide CNC machining and metal laser cutting services. Affordable prototyping and low volume manufacturing is at your hands. Or give your modeling projects a professional look with PCBWay's printed circuit boards of your own design. From 1 to 14 layers, empty or fully assembled boards, they can meet your needs. Fast turnaround times and competitive prices. Check them out at PCBWay.com. Look for more info in this video's description below. The MSS-12 comes in a snazzy, soft-carrying zipper case with a simulated carbon fiber pattern. Inside parts are neatly packed and organized. It should not be a problem putting everything back in. The most obvious piece is the separate control panel. There is a center OLED screen, control knob, and various electrical connectors. Note the wide voltage range. Main power connector uses an XT60 battery connector. The handle appears well made and has a fairly long cable with a heavy duty power connector. Nice sleek heating element. And even some stickers. If your Chinese is a little rusty, no worries, there is an English side. Assembly is very simple. Slide in the heating element and tighten the screw knob. Then plug in a 5 pin connector which also screws in tight. Finally, plug in the main power connector. That's it. We're ready to rock. There's a single multifunctional knob on the controller that twists and can be pushed in. For most of the testing, I will be using a 4S LiPo battery, as it's pretty common, but you can also go as low as 3S. Note that the IC connector is compatible with the XT60. On power-up, you're greeted with a title screen and version number before displaying the main screen that shows temperature set point, input voltage, duty cycle, and in the center, tip temperature. Rotating the knob changes the temperature settings, with 450 degrees Celsius being the maximum. Minimum stops at a 100 degrees Celsius. Pressing the button starts the heating process, which happens very quickly. Pressing the button again stops heating. For some reason, I really like the duty cycle indicator which shows the percentage of power being applied to the iron. Note that it goes down as the set temperature is reached. Now if you press and hold the knob for a couple of seconds, you then get a settings menu. Where you can adjust a whole bunch of default settings. Of course, all of which I'm going to go into with autistic detail. First is the basic iron setting menu which has over a half dozen settings. There is a temperature compensation offset. Sound setting. Temperature units. Uh, for some reason, I prefer Celsius or Fahrenheit. A setting to enable auto heating as soon as power is applied. The list ends with something related to temperature display sampling rate, I think, and adjustment step value. Then there is adjustments for time to sleep in seconds, which can be adjusted up to 990 seconds, or just over 16 minutes. And temperature for sleep mode. Non-use idle time adjustment. Sensitivity of the wake-up detection, which you'll see in a minute. And whether the screen is on or off when in standby mode. Screen brightness can be adjusted from quite dim. To very bright. If for some reason you want to hold the controller upside down, the screen can be inverted.
and you can also reverse the knob rotation. Why? Don't know. What's more useful is being able to set the low voltage warning anywhere from 10 to 23 volts. And fine tune the voltmeter for any read errors. Finally, there is the temperature calibration menu. Uh, I didn't have an external temperature gauge to do it correctly, but it is a nice option. The about screen displays the input types and voltage ranges. This may change with future firmware updates. All right, so let's take this baby for a test drive. First, by moistening up the included stand sponge. I needed to make an IC3 adapter for my wattmeter input leads. So let's check up the temperature to max since I'll be soldering thick wires. Note that she heats up really fast. A little solder on the tip. And she does a swell job of tinning the wires. Makes quick work of soldering onto the Dean's connector as well. Now for the IC3. First, I tin the connectors. Then added a matching connector to increase thermal mass. Now this helps keep the plastic housing from melting. The MSS-12 had no trouble melting the solder in the wires and connector at the same time. And there we have it. Another adapter for my uh, adapter. Don't judge me. Dialing temperature down to 300C. I tested it on a small circuit board. The iron tip is small enough for some pretty fine detail work as well. I mentioned the sleep mode before. If you don't touch the iron for a while, it will start powering down to save energy. To wake it up, just grab the handle and shake it a little bit. And she automatically comes back to life. I thought I'd try to solder two brass tubes together. I'll add just a touch of flux. And again, no issues getting everything flowing quite nicely. You may have noticed the USB-C port on the side. It says PD3 power, but I thought I would try with a relatively powerful cell phone charger. Unfortunately, it just went into firmware update mode. A battery bank fared no better. Okay, so I sprung for a true power delivery 3 USB-C adapter rated for 30 watts. This time I was able to get the expected display screen, but when I started the heating mode, it just powered itself off and reset. It just wouldn't heat up. Bugger. My best guess is that 30 watts may not be enough to run the unit. Well, there you have it, uh, another winner from Secure. Uh, I had been a bit conflicted in that I liked the other portable iron so much that I kept moving it to my field box and back to the workshop and back to the field box. And now with a second unit, I can keep one in the workshop and the other one in the field box. The MSS-12, while in two pieces, is still very portable, and I like that it has more power options. So I think it will be my new go-to soldering iron.